Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. It's a super busy time here at TV44 between our summer graphics campaign and the TV44 auction. My fundraising development hat is keeping me pretty busy. I'd appreciate your prayers during this time of year. Both of these projects are really important for the TV station, which as a nonprofit ministry is thankful for your prayers and contributions to keep our mission going. Well, we have some special people for you to meet today on Faith and Friends. Russell Young is the author of several books. His latest is Living in the Wisdom of God's Holy Word. Dancy Moeller has an inspiring conversation with him today. Also speaking of inspiring conversations, Andy Lynch talks with Wapakoneta grad Heidi Schlegel, who spent some time playing sports in Germany and how God impacted her life during that time. But first, let's get impacted by the Word of God, continuing with our July Faith Challenge character concept of love. This week's verse comes to us from 1 Peter 4, 7 through 10. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Well, just like in so many passages in the Bible, that scripture verse focuses on our outward actions, what we're supposed to be doing to others, how we're supposed to be treating others. And there's even a point in there where it says, love covers a multitude of sins. And that doesn't mean that if you love someone, they can go on sinning and it just covers it up. No, but you know what? In our love, in the way we treat others is an opportunity to, for those other person to say, hey, maybe I need to change my life. Maybe I'm not living the way I should. And so just being loving in God's way to love others can open up many doors that we don't expect. Well, for many of you, love extends beyond just the humans in your life. If you are a pet owner and love your pet, well, this next interview is just for you. For the past two weeks, Juanita Markham has been bringing us information about essential oils. Well, as it turns out, they can be used for pets as well. Andy continues his conversation with Juanita. Lots of pet lovers out in our TV44 yep. viewing area and essential oils uh, you've seen on your, your dogs yes. make an impact. Yes, I have um, nine little palm cheese at home. <laughs> um, yes, I am. Very excitable, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I have a Bonnie and Clyde and then I have their little gang. So oh, we, nice. I ended up keeping some of the pup, well, most of the puppies. <laughs> so you kind of um, have a few and that can make a pretty good vet bill. So um, one thing that I ran into is when I took them in and got them all fixed, so I kind of got mom and dad and the puppies all fixed about the same time, um, came home with kennel cough. Oh. And kennel cough typically lasts for a good week. Um, I put in um, one of the immune blends and let it run. I was putting it on their back paws, so on, on your dogs. Mm -hmm. Their reflexology points are on their back paws. Oh, really? Okay. And I'll also put it kind of like on their ears because okay. you get into the membranes quickly by doing the ears. Okay. Um, and it just, I had three of them each for about a day and a half. So they all kind of went, you know, one got it, then another one, Passed and then a third one gotcha. was three days total. Wow. And I'm, from what I was looking up um, on information about kennel cough, it's typically at least a week. Wow. And a lot of times they need to be put on antibiotics or oh, medication yeah. for it. And no antibiotics, no medications, um, just just the immune blend and running it in the diffuser. And it was it was just incredible. I, I just I've seen such good results. Awesome. Um, and another one that I just love is the digestion blend. Um, you know, you see your little dog outside eating grass. Oh, yeah. um, it doesn't take much for them just to kind of come in and spit up rubbing a little bit of that on their belly, on their back paws, and it's just been incredible. Awesome. So uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with your dogs. Lots of good information. You can get more information at ichoosetobewell.com. You can email Juanita, Juanita Markham. Uh, it's Juanita at ichoosetobewell.com. And of course, the Lyme Public Library. Uh, stop by one of her weekly sessions and get some questions answered. A great way for healthy living uh, here on Faith and Friends. Thank you, Andy. Remember, you can watch parts one and two of Andy's conversation with Juanita Markham on essential oils by visiting our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Now to our special interview with Russell Young. This author of several books has a lifetime of stories and experiences that the next generation needs to hear. Dancy Moeller has more. 
Well, it is quite an honor to be joined by our next guest. His name is Russell Young. He is an author and um, Russell, I have been reading your book and have loved it. I've been taking it outside in the morning and um, just enjoying nature and, and just getting into the pages of your book because there's so much that speaks to me um, personally. And you have go, got quite a story. I can't wait to it talk is. about yeah. um, how you happened to write this book and all these um, yeah. books that you have with you. So. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Well, but but well. Th this particular book on wisdom, yes, is something that has bothered me for years. People don't know what wisdom is. No, they and think it's being smart. Yes. That's what. Wait, you look at the dictionary. It has two words: wise. That's a lot of help. <laughs> plus knowledge. Yeah. That's it. And I found out through your um, your writings that we could be so knowledgeable about so much in this world. Very good. But we're not wise, are Very we? Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, you can have knowledge will get you a good job. Mm -hmm. And as a school teacher and business that I taught, retail marketing, knowledge will get you a good job. Yeah. But wisdom will get you a good life. Oh, absolutely. That's the secret right there. And that's what I'm trying to show in that book, how this wisdom can be gained. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, let's take us back to um, how you happen to be where you are right now. Um, you are a school teacher. Yes. And, um, and I think that that was probably a profession that was wonderful for you, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. Oh, I dearly loved it. Yeah. And so that's what you went to school for? Yes, at Heidelberg. At Heidelberg. And then um, you did become a teacher. And then you got another calling, a much greater calling, didn't you? Wow. Did I? Yes. Yeah. It was in the middle of my sixth year of teaching uh -huh. in St. Mary's, where I graduated from high school, in fact, St. Mary's. And uh, the, the minister of our church came into my classroom after the kids were all gone and told me that they needed me to go to Ghana as a missionary in Africa. And he knew I had a business major from Heidelberg. But, but he, he, I knew this was December, two weeks before Christmas. And, and, and I knew the superintendent wouldn't allow it. Right. I went down and talked to him and he said, go. He was a good Christian man. He said, go. When you get back, your job will still be here. Because that was your greatest worry, is whether or not you would have a job to return That's to. That's for sure. Yeah. I wanted to come back. I was head baseball coach, and I wanted to come back. You know, I loved that, too. And uh, he said, go. Your job will be here. And uh, they didn't know. They, uh, it was just temporary because they had to find two full-time career missionaries to manage two hospitals in Ghana. So we didn't know how long it would be, but it took three years. That was kind of a surprise. My goodness. Who went? Just you and a my friend? My wife and, and my daughter. Okay. Yep. And they were very supportive of you, or did very, they think you were crazy? Very, no, they were right behind me all the way. Is that... Mom and Dad, I got letters all the time from them. Oh, good. Everybody was appreciative, yes. And what did you learn from that time? Uh, primarily, how wonderful people are in other countries. And I loved the Ghanaian people. In fact, I wasn't there but six months and I was already preaching in their language. And, and I loved them and they really appreciated me and we had a real good mix right there. Yeah. Did you know I had a, a pen pal from Ghana when I was in did you really? I think, second grade? <laughs> yes, I did, uh, which is cool. kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. But um, so they were, they were open to hearing oh, the word from oh, you. Yes. They loved us. They loved oh. me. I can't get over how they appreciated us. When I would look at them, they would just have the biggest, they would just stand there and look at me and smile. Yeah. They just loved to have me around. And, and I, I managed the hospital, so I had all the staff, and, and I had to learn their language. Then I had a crew of maintenance men, and I learned that, you know, spoke And that's with not them. what you went to school for. No, my goodness. No. Oh, my gosh. But, but I loved them, and I loved every minute that I was there. Yeah. As so what did you come back with then? What did what would you say was your were your learning po points or your learning moments there? From Ghana, you yeah. mean? Oh my goodness! The only thing I could say would be that that I felt like uh, we should treat everybody with that same love uh -huh. uh, that they loved me and that I loved them. 
And so the, now I have that in my heart to try to give everybody that same love and respect that I gave the, the Gunnians and that they gave me. Absolutely. That, that really helped me understand people a whole lot better. So yeah. you are writing books. You have yeah. you have become an author in the meantime, oh, yeah. and um, you know I can just I I feel you so deeply, um, and and what you are trying to share with us in in your in your words in your book, um, and again as you have said, you have known people who are so knowledgeable, yes. who may seem so smart yes. in yes. this world, right? But what do they lack? Yep. You know they lack wisdom. Yes. And how do you get that? There you are. It's a good question. <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> because it is, it is, now it is from, there are two sources. Mm -hmm. Primarily from God's holy word. God is that word. And, and primarily we learn through that word wisdom. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference? Between, what, the, what, what would you say is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Right. Okay. Knowledge is science, history, math, bookkeeping, mm -hmm. yes. these things. Practical, okay? right? Yes, very. Now, knowledge then is enhanced. Mm -hmm. It is, let's say, multiplied or magnified mm -hmm. by Christ. Wisdom is. Through the word, knowledge then becomes wisdom. Yeah. And you get the wisdom by the awesome, awesome graciousness of God provides the wisdom. But the, the secret and the odd part about it is for you and me is the fact that wisdom doesn't come with a big bang and a band or, you know, none of this. No. Very quietly. It's a whisper. It just comes to you uh, before you even realize it. Yeah. But the more you read, the more you study. There are two sources, the Bible and other people. And you mention you go through also and talk about the different men in the Bible oh, yeah. and who are wise and who listened and when it didn't make any sense in the are. world, but they, they quieted themselves long enough right. to hear. Yep. And um, I Who's just, your best example of that? I would say that, um, it, oh my goodness, Abraham is starting there. Yeah, starting there. Yeah. Um, I'm up to Isaac right oh, now boy, and um but they all you know when you get to joseph that's where i'm at right now is i'm on joseph so i <laughs> i can't you wait i can't oh, wait oh yeah i'm telling you he's the one that really really gets to me and they're all men Wisdom. too that that yep. you never would have thought would have been chosen but because they they were obedient and Right. They were wise. That's they were right. able to do great things. Boy, what wisdom does for you. I know. And, and uh, one, one thing about it, one, once you have this wisdom, mm -hmm. it teaches you and goes along with you. And you become, uh, you develop self-control. Absolutely. And once you have wisdom, you, can, you have your control. And you also, you're, you're not selfish. Right. And you can't be selfish. If you have wisdom, you're not selfish. And, and not, not only that, you're truthful. You're honest with people, and, and, and you're nonviolent. Yes. And as That's you wisdom. said in the book, too, it's your fixed point. Yes. It's your fixed point yes. in yes. life, yes. you know? Yes, my brother's in the Navy, and he yes. explained that to me. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. It does. It really does. It makes it's a, a lot fantastic of sense. thing to think about. Now, I want to mention mm -hmm. the fact that there are many. This is like a gold mine reading the Bible. To me, I'm, I'm in there digging. Oh, sure. Looking for precious jewels. Mm -hmm. And wisdom is the precious jewel. And it brings about to you what you need in this life to have a good life. Mm. And the precious jewels are there, such as peace. Mm hmm well, how many people have peace today? Can you name a few? They're scarce. <laughs> That's right. Full, living, heartfelt inner peace. Inner peace, yes. Yeah, inner peace. Yeah. Well, Russell Young, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. I could talk My with pleasure. you the rest of the day, My but pleasure. we are running out of time, My and um, I want to recommend his books to all of you at home, and um, hopefully we'll see another one. Yeah. In the bookstore, the parable. Okay, parable bookstore, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right. And you'll see another one in a few months. Okay. okay? Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All My right. My pleasure. Back to you. 
Thank you, Dancy. You can pick up your own copy of Russell Young's latest book at Gifts of Joy in Lima. Well, now I want you to think back to your high school graduation. What were your goals in life? What were your hopes and dreams? And how was God there to guide you through your life? Heidi Schlegel graduated from Wapakoneta High School in 2010 and knew she wanted to continue playing basketball, which she did. But did she know how God would meet her through that path of her life? Here's Andy. Special conversation now with Wapakoneta grad and Youngstown State grad Heidi Schlegel, fresh from Germany, where she spent the year playing professional basketball. Got a lot of things to get into, but we'll start there. You know, how was the experience living in Germany, one of three or four Americans on your team? Uh, what was that like? It was amazing. It was an awesome, awesome experience. I loved learning the culture and loved um, interacting, like day-to-day -day life, being able to go to the grocery and go um, every afternoon they go and get coffee and just doing that with my teammates or with locals. It was really, really cool. Are you a coffee person? No, I'm not. I actually uh, drank chai. I started oh, really? tea. Yeah, okay. I, I really started loving that. Okay. Yeah. Do we have that here, the same level I don't think of chai? So. I don't think so, to be honest. I don't think so. What were your three or four favorite moments in Germany? If you could you know, oh. think right away, these are the things that I'm going to remember. Um, the first one is just having, my whole family came over and visited at different parts. My dad, my mom and stepdad, and my brother and his wife and their baby, and uh, my boyfriend and his dad came and visited, and um, that was like the top, like all of their visits um, tops everything. Um, but then the second thing would be um, we made the playoffs, okay. and it was like a huge moment to make the playoffs. Like. We were that team that could make the playoffs, but if we lost, we probably won it. And so, and we won the game, and that was, and my dad was there for that game, and that was, it was really cool. That was one of the top moments. What is women's basketball like professionally in Germany? What's the atmosphere like? What do the fans think? You know, kind of yeah. take us through the atmosphere. Um, it's actually a really cool atmosphere. The gyms are a lot smaller than here, but there's a lot of fans. Um, in Nordlingen, where I played, there was a lot of fans that came. There was probably about 700 to 1,000 that came every game. Oh, wow. And the gym was small, and so it was really cool to have all those fans. And then um, the one thing that's way different there is they play drums while we play. Like, there's these huge drums. There's, like, three or four guys that, like, just bang on these drums the whole game to get the crowd into it. Um, so that is, like, that, like, makes the atmosphere there. Is it really loud? Like, you, you hear it on the court? And it yeah, it's really loud. Huh. And uh, my grandma always said when she watched the game, she's like, I was so annoyed at first because you can hear them, like, on, on the TV, but then you get used to it after a while. But, yeah, it's really, really cool. How funny. Yeah. Playing professionally, what did that take as far as a skill level, going from college at the Division One level to professional? Um, it's, a, it's a jump. Um, it's a, like... From high school to college, it's there's it's a lot quicker, a okay. lot stronger. Um, college professionally, it's a lot quicker. It's even quicker, and it's even um, the girls are even stronger. I played against a girl that was six five, six six, wow. um, at my position, and so I had to figure out how to do that. Um, and it's a lo it's really physical. In Germany, they um, they don't really call fouls, um, so really? you really can do anything you want. Yeah, it's it was crazy. Um, but yeah, that, those are the things that uh, were the biggest difference. You're calling it a career as far as playing, you're retiring, what went into that decision? Um, mostly just I want to be back closer to my family and my boyfriend. Um, just being back in Ohio, being back in America. Um, I love Germany, I love the experience, I'm so thankful for the experience, but um, I just, I'm ready to be back closer to my family and make a, start giving back um, also, give back to all the knowledge that I've gained through all this playing. I'm ready to start giving back to um, high schoolers or college kids. Yeah, you're hoping coaching is next. Mm -hmm. In the summer, you'll get a chance to do quite a bit of coaching. Just tell us mm -hmm. about that experience. Yeah, I'm working um, for this organization called NBC Camps, and it's out in Spokane, Washington. And I get to work with kids every week. It's a Christian organization, and we get to do Bible studies and um, teach basketball, obviously. And then I was hired to be like the USA coach to go back to Germany for 10 days. And I'm really excited for the opportunity to show um, high schoolers what Germany has to offer as well um, and play German teams. And you'll get to go back to your, your old town for that, right? Yeah, we're going to get to play a game, uh, one game there. So I get to go back and 
see everybody that I uh, lived with the past year and then also get to show the girls I'm with um, where I live. Has coaching always been kind of what you saw yourself doing eventually? Yeah, um, once I got um, into college and started playing in college, I definitely could see myself being a, col or being a coach, high school or college level. Mm -hmm. um, just being able, like I said, to give back. And um, I feel like I went through all of this for a reason, to be able to give all the knowledge back, and um, not just about basketball, but about life as well. Faith mm -hmm. is obviously so important to you. What did God teach you in your year in Germany? Oh, oh my gosh. Just to, the first thing that comes to my mind is just to be patient and to, to believe in him. Um, that it was really tough to be that far away from home and to, to day in, day out, go to practice twice a day and to um, stay faithful and to stay, to stay strong. Mm -hmm. um, so those, that was the biggest thing that I learned through the last 10 months. Was Christianity kind of a part of culture in Germany, or has it been wiped out completely? Yeah. Was, was there much there? Not really. Um, I went to church twice, okay. <laughs> um, and I couldn't understand a word, <laughs> <laughs> so I literally just sat there. <laughs> but it was really cool. Um, it's not really a part of the daily life there, which is sad, but um, yeah, I'm glad I got to go to church. I got to go to church on Easter with my dad, so oh, wow. <laughs> that was really nice. Was that hard being on a team? I mean, you did it at Youngstown State as well. Were you, did you kind of feel alone in your faith at, the, at those moments? I did, a lot. Um, but luckily, one of my teammates, she, she had a really strong faith. And okay. so we started this Facebook page and was doing, um, just like sending each other things every once in a while and trying to keep each other accountable. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was difficult. But I know missions good. trips have made a big impact mm -hmm on your life. Uh, j just take us through that trip to India that you took a few summers ago. Yeah, oh gosh, it was the best trip of my life. I could talk all day about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to India for three weeks and um, hiked the Himalaya mountains and stayed with um, people, like stayed in the villages mm -hmm. and got to play with little kids and like teach them like English words. And um, it was just a really cool experience just to be with 10 other college students and get to experience something that God created that was so much bigger than playing basketball in Youngstown or going to school or being in America. It was just unbelievable. Was there something in particular that God really spoke to you through that trip that you still hang on to today? Um, yeah, just, just what I said, okay. that life is so much bigger than playing mm -hmm. basketball or um, that's what I remember being in Germany, like life is so much bigger bigger than this like there's so many people we can touch through basketball but it's not all life has to offer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. relationships can be so hard in this culture <laughs> this day yeah. and age it's changed a lot in 10 years it's changed a lot in 30 years you and your boyfriend were different countries different yeah. time zones <laughs> how did that yeah. maybe bring you stronger what kind of difficulties did you face kind of as a relationship yeah um every day it was it was a challenge. <laughs> I feel like every day I'm like, I really wish he was here. I wish I was there. Um, but, you know, right now, this is what God planned for us, and this is where we are supposed to be. And he's an engineer at Marathon, and so he's really busy with that. And, I, and I'm busy playing basketball, living my dream. And I'm so thankful he supported me in doing that. And um, we just learned that, like, we, had, we just have to trust him and trust that um, this is his plan. Um, every day there'd be like days I'm like, I just, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> like, go live your life. But he'd be strong and be like, no, like this is what God has planned for us. And now that I'm home, it's it's just that much greater, and it's um, we're a lot stronger from it. Well, enjoy your summer. Have a great mm -hmm. time in Spokane. Enjoy Ohio when you're here, yes. but enjoy <laughs> Spokane as well on that trip back to Germany. And thanks for your time. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Heidi Schlegel, the Wapakoneta grad, Youngstown State grad, and now. Uh, doing camps out in Spokane, Washington. Thank you, Andy. Well, it is incredible for us to watch individuals like Heidi and Russell talk about their faith in action. You know, it's much of the reason why we do what we do here at TV 44, spreading the message of Jesus Christ all throughout the region. Highlighting the positive stories of individuals throughout West Central Ohio is such a great thing that we love to be able to do. And we hope that you enjoy it as well, showing everyone how to say yes to Jesus and how Jesus truly changes lives. We're so thankful for the many of you who have already joined us this summer with our summer graphics campaign. It can be simple to think that, oh, pff, 
It's a little old system to put words on the screen. What does it even matter? Well, in our day and age of multi-sensory learning, seeing things, hearing things, reading things, understanding things, those words on the screen become a very vital necess necessity when it comes to part of what we do here. So thankful for those of you who have already jumped on board to join with us. Now be sure to read Kevin Bauer's latest update in the Take One, which was mailed out to homes this week and is also available online. To date, we've had about 100 of you join us for our summer campaign, including a $20 gift from Delphus, a $30 gift from Wapakoneta, a $30 gift from Ohio City, $25 gift from Galleon, and a $1,000 gift, wow, from Pandora. As you can see, large gifts or small gifts, God uses it all for His glory, and that is our desire. Our desire is to not compromise the message of Jesus Christ. We're not gonna change the Bible. We're not gonna turn it around so it fits how we want to live our life. No, we're gonna use it as our guide. And we hope to encourage you in that same way. Well, there's still time to donate to our Summer Graphics Project. You can donate online, in person, mail your donation or call over the phone, or you can even stop in Monday through Thursday, nine to four, or on Fridays in August and beyond. You definitely are a blessing to us. Thank you in advance. And please keep us in prayer. You know, praying for projects like this is equally important because God hears your prayers and you can stir up action in such wonderful, wonderful ways. Well, an update to you now about the 2016 auction. Items are starting to show up regularly. I just found out from Michelle, my wonderful helper who helps uh, co-organize the auction. We got a Vitamix recently, so all of you kitchen ladies, you might enjoy that. But you know what? We are ready for more, more. Yes, we want more items. We'd love to see them come in every single day. You know, this incredible chair is one of a pair, and it's one of several items that we received from Ottawa Hardware and Furniture. Thank you to that, organ that business for their wonderful um, items they've provided. Also several nice couches, leather sets, including a couch, a love seat, chair, ottoman. Uh, be sure to watch Faith and Friends in the coming weeks. Andy and I will probably try them out for you. You can also see uh, over my right corner, I've got a, a fireplace there. That is a really great item that you can put into your living room. It even has a, a fake log in there. So you can just create some nice, cozy, I don't know, it just makes you feel all good inside when you've got that kind of thing going. We'll show you that when Andy gets back, I'll show you more of that, so make sure you watch next week. You can see more pictures of some of the items that we have donated by visiting WTLW.com. And don't forget, we are accepting your auction items Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our offices are closed on Fridays through the end of July, but starting in August, you can bring those auction items on Friday as well. Bring those items right here to TV44. Our address is 1844 Beatty Road. It is helpful if you wanna call ahead of time, especially if you're gonna need some help unloading the items. We're happy to do that, but we're a smaller staff than we were in the past, and so we wanna make sure that we have all of the people necessary to help you unload your trucks and your trailers and everything else that you're gonna fill up to bring us items here to TV44. And we want you to attend. Please join us right here at the TV station, September 10th. Well, that is all the time we have for this week's Faith and Friends. One more look at our scripture for the week. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 10. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And don't forget, we love you, TV44. You know, people can say that. It's so easy to say words, but we really do care about you. It's why we're here. It's why we do what we do. And honestly, every single person you see on air here at TV44 and everybody behind the scenes could go out and find a job and make a lot more money and probably have a little... A lot less stress, to be honest, but we do this because of the purpose. We know why TV44 exists. We know it's to spread the loving, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. And we do love you. We love you, our viewers. Well, don't forget, we'd also love to see your auction items, big items or small items, bring them our way. And we still have volunteer openings, so give me a call here at TV44 and let's talk about the auction things that we can do together. 
Well, until next week for Andy Lynch, Nancy Moeller, and all of us here at Faith and Friends and at TV44, we hope you have a great, great week serving Jesus.